Hello everyone. I'm Airman Wright. Uh, I'm active duty for the U.S. Air Force. I am a weapons troop. A little bit about us. Uh, we load bombs and missiles on fighter jets. Uh, I went to Margaret Van, kindergarten and first grade. Uh, did all my schooling and after high school I decided school was not for me. So I decided to do it at work. Uh, a couple years later I joined the military and now I'm actually on my way to get my bachelor's degree. Today we are going to be reading chapter 7 of Judy Moody Goes to College. Artitude. Oops, we better not be late for class, said Chloe. They raced across campus to the art building. Judy followed Chloe down a long hall lined with colorful lockers. They passed a pottery class where people were spinning clay on wheels a sculpture class where students were making buildings out of bubble wrap, and a naked lady class. Judy squeezed her eyes shut. Please tell me we are not going to naked lady class. Chloe almost spit out her coffee. It's life drawing. To be an artist, you have to learn to draw real life. When I draw real life, it's not going to be bare naked, said Judy. In painting class, Judy got to sit next to Chloe in a dark room and watch a slideshow of paintings. There were paintings of bones and giant sunflowers and swirly twirly night skies, even soup cans. There were paintings of cut paper leaves and moons and paintings that looked like spilled cans of paint. Even though the teacher that everybody had to call professor said it was a masterpiece. There were black and white paintings of birds that hurt your eyes if you stared at them too much. These paintings are psycho, Judy said, cracking herself up. Chloe put her finger to her lips. In third grade, you're not allowed to talk when the teacher is talking either, Judy whispered. Same, same. The teacher, Mr. Professor, who liked psycho paintings, was yakking on forever about shadows in every picture. Shadows this, shadows that, shadows here, shadows there. Shadows seem to be very way important in art. When the slideshow and the yakking were over, everybody got to make paintings of their own. Finally, Judy got to stand next to Chloe at a tall table and make a big giant mess. At college, it did not matter if paper scraps got all over the table. At college, it did not matter if paint dripped all over the floor. And at college, it did not matter how many supplies you used, even a whole entire bottle of sparkly blue glitter glue. Chloe said worrying about rules was old school. Chloe said art is life and life is messy, so art should be messy. At college, all that mattered was that you, one, use your imagination, which Judy had loads and loads of, and two, be yourself. Who else would she, Judy Moody, be? Judy was so busy using her imagination and being herself that she made seven artworks in no time including a monster Venus flytrap, a self-portrait cut into cubes, and a bad mood painting that looked like, looked a little like the spilled can, can of paint guys masterpiece, and a dollop of Judy Moody thrown in. Chloe was painting a bowl of cherries sitting on a chair. Are you still working on the same painting? Judy asked. It takes a long time to paint a still life, said Chloe. Yeah, you might want to try to finish Try finishing it while you're still in this life. It's only cherries. Judy turned her head sideways. Or is it a goldfish? Thanks a lot, said Chloe. You should put some polka dots in the background, said Judy. And it needs a cat or something. Chloe said she liked Judy's idea, but Judy did not see her putting her did not see her painting any polka dots or cats. Just the same old cherries, not goldfish bowl. Judy picked up the squishy foam tray from under Chloe's real life chairs. Do you mind if I use this to make a pop art painting like that soup can guy? Go for it, said Chloe. A pop art painting Judy had just learned was a painting of an everyday object. Something that you see all the time like a soup can and you don't even think about it. Then when you paint it shocking pink or lemon yellow, all of a sudden it shocks you and you think about it. Judy, Judy drew a band-aid in the, in the foam tray 
She poked lots of holes for band-aid holes. Then she smeared smeared it with paint and pressed it over and over nine times on one big piece of paper in lots of different neon bright colors. My papa really pops, Judy told Chloe. You did that, said so Chloe. It looks fantastic. I mean it. Chloe still had not painted one single polka dot, not even a cat hair. Aren't you done yet, Judy asked? You are going to get an S for slow and a or a T for turtle in this class. Chloe laughed. Okay, let's go. I can finish this later. Judy gathered up all her paintings. I'm going to hang them in my bedroom like an art show. I think this one's my best. She pointed to her pop art painting. I call it Portrait of a Band-Aid Not Soup Can Without Shadows, Deluxe Edition. I like how you signed it just Jude, said Chloe. That's my artist name. Well, just Jude. I think you better leave that one here because it's not dry yet. Ah, oh, said Judy. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on it for you. You can pick it up next time you come for tutoring. I better get you home. I have a 20-page philosophy paper to write about Pilato and Socrates. Plato and Socrates? Well, at least you get to write about fun stuff, said Judy. Yeah, right. As they climbed into Chloe's punch buggy gecko green BWB beetle, Chloe told Judy, you busted that art class. I owned it, Judy said, beaming from ear to ear. As far as Judy could tell, there were only three bad things about college. One, going to school on Saturday. Two, naked lady class. And three, yakking for a year and a day about shadows. Other than that, college had hardly any rules and you got to make lots of noise about being peaceful. You got to have sleepovers every night with your roomies like Bethany Wigmore and play drums with peeps like Paul and hang out in tents that did not have any attitude and eat burgers made of veggies all day and change boring old ordinary stuff into art. College was uber rare, sick awesome.